uh, and show the work that we have done uh, and get inspired to, to go forward. Uh, we had a seminar also that we initiated on, on plastic uh, litter, uh, focusing on uh, small island development states. And that was a, a mission that we got from uh, the agency uh, to write a, a report and we wanted to follow up with a seminar and uh, it was kind of how should we as the University of Gothenburg, how could we link up to these small island development states but as you know as a university it is quite obvious that we have contacts and we could use researchers from different faculties, we could use their contacts so it's, it's Quite, uh, it was a hectic time during the spring to get everything together, but it was uh, actually uh, possible. And we could uh, also say afterwards that we have gained a lot of uh, good experience and networks. Some uh, key words from this were, uh, of course, plastic litter was one of the key uh, areas discussed, but I think also uh, uh, small-scale fishery, uh, what is it, legal and unreported fisheries was also one of the topics. Uh, and uh, buzzwords that were coming back were, of course, collaboration. Uh, and uh, that was emphasized not just uh, between different industries or countries, but but uh, in all different levels. So collaboration was also so a, a, a thing. Uh, I think also, uh, at least from my point of view, you got just a little view of what actually was happening. But one thing was also the, the uh, emphasis on connecting land and sea, connecting also the people in uh, uh, big cities with the sea, uh, and the the the, the let's say the, the task for us also as uh, educators to bring the sea into the classrooms that was also something that we thought of. So um, I think this is then a time for us to, to reflect and go, go on and think. So, so what does this all mean for for uh, in our situation in Gothenburg? I also uh, want to uh, say that there was, if you go into the website of the Ocean Conference, there is a list of voluntary commitments. And that is, I think, a kind of new thing, at least for a university, to not just have a goal or objective, a vision, but actually to commit itself. So <laughs> it's, it's not a, a usual thing to do. But that is maybe something that we as a community at, at the Göteborg could think of. What is our commitment for the next year in relation to the, to the uh, Agenda 2030? What, when, what do we want to achieve? Where, what, uh, when are we satisfied we at least have contributed in some way? Uh, Ocean Planet was a, the, also a theme that came back uh, several times and I, I think the contribution if you look on a political level is that we have now a, a more of a unity uh, uh, that the ocean is important. It's not just a, a task for some of the UN organizations, it's, it's a, something that concerns all different uh, organizations within the international community. So from there, we have asked them, uh, Mats and Lili and Anna, to say some words about how they see how this collaboration is actually taking part and what are the challenges, how could we get forward and maybe give us some uh, advice or at least some hey, the tips. 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 <laughs> How to get for it. So, Max, you are starting. 
start the, on yeah. the next one. Okay. I think Molly, I think we need some. I don't get to say something. Now, so Max uh, Svensson is the head of unit for research and environmental objectives at the Swedish Water Swedish Agency, Agency for Water. Marine and Water Science. It's warm. It's warm. It's warm. So this is it. Uh, I was not in New York, uh, but our international unit was there. So uh, you probably maybe you met my colleague or my some of uh, the other staff from the swarm also, because they were supporting the Swedish government tremendously in terms of the preparation for our conference. And also we were working since well last autumn, for putting a lot of uh, different kinds of materials, and I'm. I think several of you also provided to that, that we were then handing over to the other members. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the kind of settings where we are working currently with, with ESGs. Well, Agenda 20, 2030, as it's called, Agenda 2030 in Swedish. Uh, you know, and that's kind of the political word and the wording, Agenda 2030 in Sweden. Also. Uh, and we, then there are two dimensions of that. First of all, the international one. Where you have been all hearing about the New York conference and so on. But, um, but there is also the national one. And the national one then can also then, of course, be applied upon regional or local levels as well. Then. So there are also challenges for each of us within that one, depending on what kind of level it is we are talking about. Then. Um, so this is what I'm going to talk about. So there are then. Um, what we have currently in Sweden are then the environmental objectives of Sweden, and I'm sure that you are, are quite familiar with them. However, we've had them since 1998, and they are still not that well known in the Swedish society, I would say. But they are the kind of basics and also the starting point for our work, where we are then looking at the Sustainable Development Goals, so Agenda 2030. So that's where we start. There are then 16 environmental objectives, where my authority is then totally directly responsible for three of them, all related then to water. Um, <clears throat> there are, are then um, seven other authorities that are, are then responsible for other of these environmental objectives. Then. These objectives are then uh, uh, also, uh, you can break down them in, in subtopics. And there are around 145 various kinds of subtopics or, or, or uh, sub targets on each of these, uh, of all these environmental objectives. They also relate to the 168 various kinds of subtopics that you have in the ESDTs also. So, not to spoil what we've been doing currently, we are then actually then taking what we've been doing with the environmental objectives. Now transforming into the sustainable development objectives. However, they are not. There is no one-to-one -one matches, and there are lots of information that is lacking because the environmental objectives of Sweden uh, will, I would say, will target mainly the environmental dimension of sustainability, touching also economic and social, while the sustainable development goals are then covering everything. Then also, so there are lots of then societal challenges that has not been directed in the environmental objectives previously then also. Uh, and what we've been doing is then looking at how we can actually then be smart and work then in an effective way, looking at what kind of information we have. And on top of that one also, what we can use in terms of while we're working with various kinds of directives in EU, where we also have indicators that could be used for that kind of information. So that was the kind of setting. And then uh, a year ago, we were then given a, a governmental uh, mission to develop new indicators for the environmental objectives. But we then we, at that time, also knew that these SDGs were coming. So we were then thinking ahead of that and trying to work smart. So what we were doing then also was suggesting things that could be utilized later on then also. So we've been suggesting a set of indicators for the Swedish government that they have not responded to yet. But no news are good news, so we are just continuing. <laughs> and that is also due to that now the environmental objectives is having the kind of target year of 2020. 
which means that we need a lot of political um, uh, statements on on how to proceed from these targets, objectives, aiming at 2020, and then transforming them to also aim at 2030. However, out of these 16 environmental objectives we have, there's only two that will be reached in 2020. So there are still 14 to work for. Mm -hmm. So we can postpone them until 2020, 2030 then also. So that's the kind of background, and that, that's also my kind of bottom line uh, mission that I'm here is to say that there's really nothing new in what we are doing. We're just continuing. And what you are then providing already is good enough already because you are providing a lot of information that we're already using in various kinds of settings when we are reporting for the environmental objectives then also. Uh, so here are the 16 environmental objectives of Sweden. Uh, as I said, we are then responsible for, for the, the marine one, uh, the, the freshwater one, and for no over-fertilization, to put them in short words. And then uh, we are then reporting them on an annual basis, first of all, but every fourth year we also do more of a thorough analysis on how far we've been coming in this kind of work. And we are already now starting the last one that we are doing the, within this in the metal objective system, and that is called the, uh, the, the uh, 1990 or 2019, that will be ready then also. Uh, as, and we will then also hopefully get a mission from the government also how to also present how we will continue with the SDGs after this day also. Uh, as I said before, uh, we've been starting with the environmental lobby already in 1998, so we've been working with them quite a lot. Uh, however, that, there has not been that connection, particularly with the universities, in terms of how we are dealing with these ones. Uh, while in the, the rest of the society, municipality and the county and so on, they have been working quite a lot with the environmental objectives. So they're already prepared in these kinds of systems. But now we're going to broaden that kind like, of mission, both for the municipalities as well as for the county boards as well. And then also including other actors in this. And I would say uh, that we'll be get, getting quite a good momentum already now with the momentum reactors among the companies. And that is probably then going to grow also for the SDGs. So there are lots of new, new challenges also within that kind of system. Um, they have also been developing over the years, of course, 1998, and now, now we, are in, we are in 2017. That's quite a long period of time. That's almost, well, almost 20 years. And lots of things have been happening there. And therefore, also, some of these uh, objectives have been strengthened a lot, not the least the climate one, because that was not that well represented in the environmental objectives system. However, now it's taking a lot, lots of more, more space with the, with the Agenda 2030. So we are hoping that that can bridge into the, uh, the Agenda 2030, this kind of work. Um, we have with the generational goal, which is, uh, I, I would say, one of the kind of paragraphs that you should not forget when you're working with this. And I think this is the most important one in terms of the environmental objectives, that we should not actually then put the burden on the next generation of what we've been actually been causing. And that's a lot of responsibility then also, also for the politicians, because it means also that there is a time horizon for where we are going to solve the, the kind of problems that we could be creating ourselves then as well. Then. So this is really a, a, a good one where you can always mention. If you don't have any other aces in, in your sleeves, you can always say, say that. Please. Well, what about the generational objective? So remember that one, because that, that is kind of a paragraph that is, well, a kind of an umbrella idea for the environmental objective system. Uh, here are all the 16 goals that we have in the environmental objective system right now. Uh, with the kind of uh, correct English uh, vocabulary for the also, and then we are responsible for civil unification, flourishing lakes and streams, and then a balanced marine environment, flourishing coastal areas and archipelagos. And they are quite broad, these kinds of goals, the most. Uh, 
Um, as I said, we were get, getting very efficient to uh, develop indicators for these uh, individualities. Uh, that was given to, to the Swedish EPA and the tools like it uh, last autumn, and then they were then getting all the other authorities on board. Uh, and what we've then been doing is we'll be with the, presented at this new place, uh, which is all the, well, still under development, I would say, of course, the last new place, should have been up and running by now. Um, now, indicators will be updated frequently, uh, on many on an annual basis, some on uh, every fourth year or every second year and so on. And some indicators are also using the same information as we are then putting into the EU directives work, and also both the marine directive as well as the water directive. Um, we have then suggested uh, these kinds of things for uh, for water. Uh, I have a long list, uh, yet only in Swedish. Um, but they will then directly be linked to the SDG target 16, 14, and 15. You know which ones they are. There you have number 14 over there on, on Elena's t shirt there. But uh, target 6 is related to fresh water, and target 15 is related to, to biodiversity. So they are the ones that we are directly then involved into. However, we will be indirectly involved in a lot of the other ones also, but that is not defined yet. There are lots of things about uh, food, food security, such stuff also, that is then of course related to water as well. And, also. and bottom line is also that SCB, the, the Statistical uh, Central Bureau of Sweden, is the one that is responsible also for all these kinds of indicated work including uh, for the Agenda 2030 then also. And the project leader for that one is Lydia Kapal. Uh, I don't know whether you, you know her or not, but uh, she's been working with the Institute quite a lot then also. So that's the one that you should then target and maybe invite you to work at the one then also. If you have specific questions related to which indicators we've been developing, I have a long list, but I would like to come back to that later on then also where we've been developing. But I think that's say that there are lots of, of information here that we've been developing then, uh, for this kind of work here also. And now we're work relate, well, waiting for the kind of political response in, in these issues here as well. Thank you. Thank you, Hans. Thank you. We will come back to uh, questions. If you, if you have any help, um, let's run the uh, switching. We could yeah. assume uh, uh, objects that there were reached on the 2020. Did you say that? Uh, no, uh, safe radiation. Uh, or, well, it's not the correct label of them, but it relates to radiation. radiation. Mm -hmm. And there is, which is the second one now? I can't remember. The yes. ozone so, uh, layer, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, these two we, we, we can tick off, really, but not any of the other ones. Okay. But think of more uh, uh, tricky questions from us uh, after we have the presentations, and we can come back. Okay. Okay, Helene Jansson, and working uh, at the Zero Vision and uh, Green, Green Team. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Very much welcome. Thank and you. you will say something about, from your point of view, uh, how the industry is working. And some reflections also from the conference. Thank you. Yes, um, Zero Vision Tool is a method. It's a method for collaboration and it's an industry driven method. Uh, and I'm so happy that two days ago this method was actually adopted for Telcom and Council of the Sea States. They developed a subgroup called the Green Team. And they will try to use this method collaborating between the authorities, uh, the industry, and the universities. So I think this invitation for today was perfectly matched. So, uh, with no further ado, let me tell you about the method and the process so far. In 2009, uh, it was started different projects, and there have been a lot of things um, developing during the years. However, the vision has always been the same. Uh, to move from land to sea when it comes to transport, to enlarge the growth, uh, the welfare 
and also lowering the negative impacts on the environment, on climate, and also get more energy efficient. And that's the vision for the industry, getting into this collaboration. Uh, when Civilization Tools started, we said, okay, we have this vision. Uh, what is needed? Well, we need different types of projects. But these projects need to be put in five different areas because otherwise we won't be able to cover all the different things we can do together to move forward more quickly. Which means that every project that is using the method is recording into a vessel, the infrastructure around it, uh, the financial issues, the legal issues, regulation issues, and also new R&D. Things that are not yet done or need to be developed further. And this is a progress reporting, which is super, super important, especially in this environment, because as far as I know, it's more normal to report when you're done with something, because you need your time, you need to do your studies and analysis and things. But, but here, it's a progress every quarter. So if you haven't found anything, that is as important as it is to know that you found a result, because that can actually contribute when we report further to the authorities, for instance. Uh, red, yellow, and green is also something that is recorded. It's green. This is something we can do. We will solve it. We will take care of it. We take the leader board on, on this topic. So no one else needs to do it. The yellow one is when you want to talk and discuss and see if you can get more input. And the red one is we can't continue. We won't be able to do it because we have something that is hindering us. Uh, in the beginning, it was a lot of regulation issues. When it comes to new solutions, when it, uh, implementing green new technologies on board ships, for instance, or uh, imports, or trying to move something. Then this is reported to a reference group. And so far, it's been only Swedish authorities, agencies, and the government. But two days ago, uh, the green team which includes all the Baltic Sea states and some of the Northern Sea states, said, yeah, we would like to use this method because we see the possibilities to move forward and we can also collaborate when it comes to regulation issues, for instance. So, Calcom, CVSS, they have been observers in the, uh, in the reference group so far, uh, but now we use it. And then we have the disseminations, where we collect all the different projects. So far it's 22 industry projects and three university projects that is collaborating in different areas. Uh, one is actually a uh, Jung uh, University project, SHIP, which is uh, Gothenburg University, Uppsala University and Chalmers, where they look at acid acidification, both in air and water. Uh, and they are looking into specifically the scrubber technology. And if you don't know what I'm saying, or there are words that I am using that you're not comfortable with, just let me know, because I know you will use words that I don't know. So. Uh, but that is what they are doing, and what they chose to do when they used this method was to use one of the industry projects that actually were implementing lightweight new technology for scrubbers. So they got samples, they had uh, meetings, they were on board, and they got um, a really cool development together, and they have two different projects, sharing knowledge, and then of course disseminated together in progress. And in the end, we think that if more use this type of method, uh, we will be able to gain knowledge, both for the society uh, on the local level, but also on the global level. So um, coming to that, in December last year, we we actually got a letter from Ant Moon saying, please include the CVT method into all the work that is done for the climate. And therefore, we were actually at the same conference this, this uh, June uh, for the Gold 14. And we had a lot of industry representatives with us and university representatives presenting their work so far lifting what they have found so far, and also what the obstacles are. When you look at transport at sea, which is not just local, it is global. Anyway, moving on. Uh, this is just the way we've been looking at things. Um, you can choose 
a lot of different models and types of uh, looking into change. We chose this one because we think it's quite simple. Uh, you have to understand that there is a need for change. In 2009, two different collaborations started. One was the industry group, where 50 different organizations wrote an email, wrote an email at that time, a letter to the <laughs> European Commission saying, please, 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 the sulfur directive for 2015, can we move it <coughs> forward a bit? Because we're not ready, and the answer was no. Then the Baltic Sea position was created. Swedish ship owners and Swedish ports put together 30 different types of solutions they already had. Universities like Gothenburg University, Chalmers and others were there looking into the solutions and gave the pros and cons to them. Nothing else happened and that's when the CBT started. We added the authorities and the governmental perspective as well because we need to move forward together. And we come to the fourth step. So understanding the need, the ideas <coughs> in the system we did, create pioneering practice, all of these different projects now have new types of technologies that are looked into, and we are at enabling the tipping point. We need to come to the step six to actually find a new normal state where the green solutions are the normal thing. So, uh, two days ago, when we were uh, sitting down at the green team meeting, the green team, the subgroup, which is underneath Telcom, but a collaboration together with the Council of Baltic Sea States and others. Uh, they said, yes, we need to move this, make it a bit larger, broader, and please see to that we move forward. And that's what I would like to do as the first thing here. Please, if you have projects, interesting ideas, and things you think could fit in to move forward in the green technology, both for air, water, um, infrastructure, uh, when it comes to transport at sea, uh, this is the place to put together information for the green team in contact with Elkhorn and the others. You will have a, a large network, but, the, but you will also, when you report in, you will gain a lot of knowledge back. Um, that is closely connected to the UN roles. Um, we actually made, a, I think it was four different industry uh, voluntary commitments uh, at that place when uh, the, industry the industry representatives made their commitments and the green team made one as well where we said uh, we will see to that this meeting is uh, lifting the suggestion and I, I need to move uh, on from this meeting to actually report that in an hour <laughs> uh, but then also uh, before this year is over have an action list that we agree on uh, along these <coughs> countries. So it's quite interesting and you should be more involved if you want to with the green team and just let me know if you're interested in doing that. And uh, so this is just a few pictures of the different projects and it's, it's real life projects. It's progress every quarter from the blueprint to now have ships, to have ports, to have new technology tested, to have projects that actually failed, and what happened then, and all the information that came out of that, not least, and all the success ones. Um, yeah. So maybe the next step. This is what we agreed on. Uh, there are so many other initiatives than just the method CBT, and we will hear from, from some here today. So there are a lot of industry initiatives, there are governmental initiatives, there are collaboration forms of different kinds. Uh, we should gain the knowledge that are there. And if we do that, and we have financial mechanisms that support that, sometimes you need to have full cover uh, and you apply for and with applications. And sometimes, perhaps, the industry can see to that you gain money to do what you need. Uh, and if we have different types of uh, financial mechanisms that supports <coughs> us moving forward and we can measure that they are good for the environment, then we can start to share the information in communities like this, but, but also where we are, all of these different types of stakeholders, um, so that we can gain 
uh, and move forward both in the governmental <coughs> parties and the industry and university parties. So, yeah, I think that was progress reporting. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think that was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Solutions Network, and this is an example of also type of reporting. How could you uh, value your work towards the SDGs? And uh, this is also a collaboration that was. Uh, there is a report that you have with you, Anna. Yeah. Anna, talk about it. Yeah, good. And, and it's available if you, you would like. So, since there is a little short time, I will keep it short. Good. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah, thank you for the, for the invitation today. I really like the talk that you just heard. I'm also going to talk about the method that we use here within our network. So, our network take actually our steps from these goals. So, it was created in uh, 2012 initiated by the UN to make academia a part of defining the Agenda 2030. And it's an academic network uh, gathering a lot of institutions, academic institutions from university, research uh, institutes around the world and commit to a sustainable development. And the goal was from the beginning to be part of defining the Agenda 2030. And then after that, moving into the implementation of Agenda 2030. And the network is global, but uh, they have 22 different regional and national nodes. So SDSM, Sustainable Development Solution Network, Northern Europe, take care of the members that live uh, that stay in the Nordic region. So it's Sweden, Denmark, Norway, <coughs> Iceland. And what we do is that we create platforms. We create projects uh, for joint learning, I would say, because what we are standing in front of to reach these 17 SDGs, we really need to collaborate, as we heard before. So what I'm going to do here is just giving you one example of what we are doing within the SDSM network in the Northern European one, and we call it the Solution Initiatives Forum. It's a way of creating a platform where different actors around a specific challenge is meeting. So here we have entrepreneurs with innovative solutions. We have uh, investors, uh, the financial mechanism that we were talking about is uh, of course a very important part of it. We have policymakers, we have academia, and we also have the bigger uh, business sector with us. And we meet around the big theme of ocean and all the different challenges that the ocean is surrounded with. We had a full day here in Gothenburg in May, gathering all these different actors around solutions. And we made, uh, as a preparation for the Solution Initiative Forum Ocean, we made this report. And in this report, we gather 17 different types of solutions. And the way that we connected academia with these solutions were through a process that we call an SDG impact. So these are solutions that are already out there. This is great ideas that have become uh, entrepreneurs and smaller companies on the way to scale up. So what we introduced them here was the self-assessment of seeing what is the impact of all the goals. Even if the entrance might be goal 14, if you start doing something for goal 14, you might have different impacts on, other part, on the other goals. So we asked them to do a self-evaluation first, and then we set together a team of experts, some of them are actually here today, <laughs> and that looked at these answers that we gave. 
and see, seeing the, the as a learning result, this is a learning process, both for ourselves, <laughs> I was part of this committee, um, but especially for the solutions to see how they understood the goals, first of all, and how they understood how they are impacting the goals in different ways. And this resulted in the report that I have here, let me see, them. I actually just have two of them, they've been very popular. <laughs> And the report went all the way to New York and the UN conference as well, and it was very popular there as well. But you can find it electronically on our web page as well. But this is also, it's hard to see here, obviously, but you can look at the report later on. But we also took help from a designer to find out the way that we can communicate the impact that we have on different goals. And this is what you see here. Uh, yes, that, that, that's what I wanted to say. But Maybe I could just say at the ending point that I think that finding ways of concretely working together, because it's so easy to say that we need to collaborate between different sectors in the, in the society, but you need something concrete to work with. And we found it very helpful to do this SDG impact assessment as a learning process, but also the academia to understand what type of impact does different solutions have on the SDGs. That was it, an example of what we're doing. And I would again like to say thank you to all of them, all of these people that were with us on the Solution Initiative Forum Ocean in May, but especially to all of those who have helped us put it together with support, and especially to the American cluster who was part of, of the whole process. That was very helpful with the expertise that we do not have. So thank you. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> So, questions and comments, uh, and we we'll just start. Uh, uh, Mats, you talked about indicators and how to follow the work with the uh, Swedish environmental objectives and the SDGs in work. Uh, you presented the method, uh, and Anna as well as an example how to collaborate. But how do you really? think the researcher would get involved in this? Is it just by publishing or how, how do you go about how to, to collaborate with the uh, researcher? How, how could we get involved in this? Well, first of all, we learned to know that we can know our 167 various kinds of sub-targets and, okay. and also, <laughs> also how, how they can be developed in, in terms of assessing them, measuring them, developing and I think that, that's also what you can provide it in, in those kinds of networks and see what you see as well. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot to do though also because we have to be able to assess and, and uh, also show progress to make it politics and to make it kind of polit political decisions out of it then also because that, that's what we need. That's also how we can drive the kind of societal development. Okay. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, we need to show the progress and measure uh, because sometimes a small step it's the breaking point for the big step and sometimes you sit and wait and you want to do more but, but to really find that small step sometimes helps and if you share that knowledge on the way and you can measure what they do you definitely will gain uh, more knowledge and I can have an example when it comes to all the industry projects using the CEPI team. There is a university project called the 0.8. There are uh, nearly all universities in Sweden, so as far as I know, and some institutions. They got a task from the industry projects. We want you to measure our investments in green technology. The air perspective, the water perspective, uh, if you move from land to sea, the noise perspective, um, oh my goodness, I think it was 10 different perspectives. And the question when I was at, help us, and so far academia have been able to measure the air perspective, because there are not models enough, or maybe none, in the other perspectives. Which means that, okay, perhaps there is a model, but it can't be used outside the Swedish borders, and perhaps there is a model, but it's land-based models, which can't be applied on ships. So there are a lot of 
very interesting things. And if I was half as good as you are and uh, had an academia title and an interest in the sea, I, I would dig deep into see all of the things that could be uh, looked into because there are still a lot of work needed to be done to show. And if I can mention, just to looking at the air perspective, they come so far that one million euro per year and ship is saved mostly for health when you use LNG, a gas, instead of oil. And that is not fossil free yet. Still, it's a big step forward. So to be part of that, if you're interested in that, uh, it's, it's brilliant because it's also helping the industry and it's helping the change and if we can report constantly. Uh, yeah, sorry I took a lot of time there, but I, I think Thanks, you Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think the network of STS is, is crucial for this because the thing is that in academia we do have the knowledge, but we need to be able to use it in a different way when it comes to STS. I mean, academia here are getting the premium for publishing in a very nice <coughs> journals and that's good of course that's good but if we want to help the society to implement the SDGs we need to do more so within the network we're also working on the structure how can we use all this knowledge that are inside these academic houses how can we use them better and that means that we need to open the door not just open it and let the knowledge out of the of the academic institutions we need to let the knowledge in as well and we have pretty bad on that I would say uh, normally. So we need to, to find a way to get knowledge out and get knowledge in. And also find a way of communicating because research, if you are a researcher, you know that what you're doing is a very, very specialized on a very specific point. But communicating the result of that needs to be communicated in a big picture. And we are not very <coughs> okay. So we need to find ways to get the knowledge into the big picture and there uh, when it comes to okay. yes, well, let's talk you about manuals. Least, yeah, no. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's talk about manuals, of course, that's always some concern if, um, if you're doing research. Already now, uh, the uh, research agenda within uh, GPI Water is then directed directly to SDG 6. And we are currently then also uh, creating the research agenda for the uh, next coming bonus program that will also encompass uh, the North Sea. That will also direct uh, uh, SDB number 14 also. So there will be a resemblance between, between the research agendas for these kinds of grants and applications that we can write and what should then also be provided. But most importantly is also that most research is well, basic research is not that well paid. It should be applicable always. So it should kind of be the, the social notion should be also within the kind of, of applications as well. So who is it good for? What kind of targets will it be then achievable and so on also when you write applications? So there is then money coming within the uh, both EU as well as other sources. Also, what we have now directly at, at SWOM, together with, with, with Swedish EPA, is the uh, uh, we have around 90 million pounds per year that we are then providing for research that goes now for research for the energy objectives. That, of course, will then, then translate to research for the SDGs later on, then also. So that's also coming. So keep an eye on that one as well. So there will be sources for. for uh, for money, then also for doing this research. Of course, also researchers need bread and butter as well. Yeah, but connecting also to what you said before about measuring, because when it comes to research money, we also see in the new Forskings um, Prop <laughs> that we should be able, uh, from academia point of view, to be able to measure that we are doing utilization of research. How do you measure that? That's also a very important question. I mean, if you have indicators, and it's the same also on the national level when it comes to the indicators for the SDGs. How do you really measure this? I mean, it's easy when we talk about GDP or when we talk about how many children are going to school or if you get food or... But there are other things that are much, much harder to measure, especially when it comes to knowing if your research really did uh, move the agenda forward. So I think we have a huge challenge there. We have some questions. Uh, Susan, Lasse, Lasse. 
Uh, yeah, I think it's very difficult, that question. I mean, how can you measure if you have an impact or not? But I, I would like to stress the, the method that was used in the Solution Niche Forum as also a measure that we could use, all of us could use, uh, that is to say, to use this impact assessment of, of your own research to actually understand whether you are already doing research that is good for the, or has some kind of impact on the, on the 17 goals. So I would like to suggest that we start using this kind of impact assessment method also among researchers here. Because in that way you can get some kind of, you learn a lot and you get your knowledge uh, uh, you learn to know the goals and you also learn to know whether your research that you're doing here and now has some kind of impact and how can you also then sort of target uh, things a little bit better and, and of course communicate what you are doing. So I think that the method that we were using, I, I was actually involved in the project, I thought it was really, really good as a learning process for for researchers as well. We were targeting uh, industry, but for researchers, it's the same method and it's the same approach. I think. And we are actually, yes. I'm happy that you're bringing that up because we are actually now <laughs> applying for money to be able to use this tool online. <laughs> so it would be easier to use than this yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and maybe we also should look into the other methods. Lasse? Well, <clears throat> well, we are very much talking about research all the time here, and it's very important, of course, for research. But one of the things that I also think is very crucial in the, in the discussion here is that what is happening to, I mean, how do we uh, get to the students, really, from, from the beginning? Because that is an important thing to create new researchers to come into the business. I've been running four courses in maritime law here in, at the university for quite some time. And uh, one of my biggest problems at the moment is that to engage people from the industry. We were talking about the information in and information out. Because if we don't get this interaction between the industry into, so they say, the not so fancy thing as research, the school education, makes it more difficult really to, to enhance an interest for all those global challenges that we have within the field of all maritime and maritime law and so on and so forth. So that is my biggest problem really to get the industry and also administration, I'm sorry to say, but it's difficult to get you to get involved within the different courses that you are on. So we're giving a full year of courses for maritime law in different perspectives. That is a key point here, really. I mean, if we don't, to say, enthusiastically deal with the university students in this, we won't get the good researchers and we won't get the good research sounds. So, no wrong, but unfortunately, Education is perhaps not that sexy as uh, research for us. Unfortunately, we need to uh, move on, but Sebastian, you have a short one? No. Uh, it's not a short one, but I think an important one. <laughs> yeah. uh, that reached out to all the three of us, but maybe more specifically, I can address it to you, Mats, about the social aspects of sustainability that you mentioned. That this is something new after three decades of talking and having these environmental <coughs> impact assessment or, uh, or objective indicators. You said something that is new is now that you work or talk about social and economic aspects mm. within this world. So my more specific question would be how you think you can address that in HAAS or SWAM. Um, is there any talk about this? How to, what does the agency need to address issues of social, political, cultural aspects of sustainability that are popping up all the time? Sort of the long neglected pillar of sustainable development is social aspects. Mm. I think there's there's an ongoing discussion in, 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 in academia. There are even some articles in science on how to engage social concepts for sustainability. But this whole debate is outpacing actual use. Of, there are no pre-established uh, interfaces yet no. for integrating that. So are there more specific, I think it's an interesting question to all three of us, but more specific to use. What's the state of the art in SWOM how to address social science? other discussions to increase social science expertise in your agency? I like your question. Do you have any ones? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a very important one, but mm. I, I, there's no really good answer on that one, and we are currently not there. Mm. Because we're, first of all, we are not given the, the kind of mission, so we don't have that kind of knowledge on board. Mm. Second, we need to uh, engage people 
students at etc. also, which is having maybe a, a more of a broad mindset mm -hmm. further on than also. Of course, now we are a bunch of specialists that we've been also, uh, well, we are products from, from the previous educational system, of course. And uh, we have to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we have been starting that journey and starting the discussion within ourselves and also that we are not there at all mm -hmm. yet. And uh, now we're talking about kind of human dimension in terms of all the marine planning, for example. We're also looking at how to measure what, what the well-being of human beings could be. Mm -hmm. I would say one of the key things that we're working quite a lot with is then ecosystem services. And there are also, also intangible ecosystem services that could also be addressed by this then also. Of course, then there is more of a direct link. What do we need the environment and nature for? And there are also then values that you cannot touch directly. So it's, it doesn't mean that we should put a kind of, of a monetary value on everything, but we should put a, out the value of things instead. And also, you're starting yeah, with, like, with, uh, yeah. with, with uh, education. I think that's also one thing that is really crucial. Like, if we want the model to join this, we need the broader the perspective. Uh, within academia, so we get a broad knowledge that we get out to society. Also. So before sneaking out, yes. again, <laughs> thank you so much for joining. And we would like to hear more about this uh, later on. And maybe we take you to some suggestions uh, and do a special seminar to, to think if we could apply the method. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. <laughs>